Have you ever wondered if we can get rid of glyphosate and other agrochemicals that we use to grow our food? Dr. Elaine Ingham, world-renowned soil biologist and founder of the Soil Food Web, who's been studying soil biology for decades, is here to give us hope today. In this short interview, she lets us know if we can do it and gives us some tips on how to do it. I'm Natalie Forsbauer, founder and editor-in-chief of Heart and Soul Magazine, your guide to regenerative farming, gardening, and living. If you haven't grabbed your subscription yet, head on over to heartandsoulmagazine.com and grab yours for just $39.99 a year. Be sure to like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel to amplify the global regeneration conversation. I'm really excited you're here. Enjoy this short interview with Dr. Lynn Ingham. There was a recent paper that was published in Japan um, where I had been talking to these guys four, three, four years ago, and wouldn't they please like to do this research? They did it, showing that the only place the weeds grew was when you had just nitrate present in the soil. As soon as you started getting that NH4, the ammonium signal occurring because of the fungi, then the weeds couldn't grow, and the crop plants flourished. Well, let's make sure that we have that happening all the way down in the profile so that your plant can be happy, healthy, get all the nutrients that requires, and so you as a human being can be healthy. You're getting all the nutrients. I always want to make people think about you have to have microorganisms in your digestive system. And part of your digestive system is anaerobic, but most of your uh, digestive system is at least partially aerobic and it gets more and more aerobic the further you go through your large intestine. So where do you get the inoculum of all these different species of bacteria and fungi and protozoa and yes even nematodes that are supposed to be there. They've been there in your parents or your grandparents, they had all these organisms in their digestive systems. They didn't have the diseases and the pro early onset, this, that, and the other thing. So where do you get those organisms that you're supposed to have in your digestive system if you're eating sterilized food? How can you re-inoculate your own digestive system? You need to be eating food that is covered with all of these beneficial organisms. When you take a bite into an apple, it shouldn't have wax all over it. Where are the good guys? What's, lying, what's growing underneath that wax layer? Well, it's not aerobes. It's the disease causers. It's the problem organisms. So what are we inoculating ourselves with? We have to reverse that as well as reversing carbon sequestration. We've got to get those um, carbons back into the soil and the only way you can do that is to put a good healthy food web back into your soil. Can we compost chemical fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides out of the soil? We can compost, Them out. yeah, yeah, so like if um, you've got plant material that was grown um, using toxic chemicals, using pesticides, inorganic fertilizers, so it's really not balanced food for anybody yeah, so at least try to get part of what you're putting into your compost pile, some really good fresh material that was grown without pesticides, grown without these toxic chemicals, because you just need the inoculum. Those sterilized surfaces, those, that plant material that doesn't have any decent biology on it, we have to have a source of those organisms that are going to go, wee-ha, look at this, empty territory. <laughs> go in there and they break down those toxic chemicals. Most people think of like um, Roundup, glyphosate. Oh, it's terrible, it's accumulating in our environment. Why? Because we've killed everything that decomposes it. Put the decomposers back into the soil and glyphosate disappears in two weeks. If you've got the right sets of organisms, they're gonna take care of the problem, but we gotta stop killing them. Compost any chemical pesticide or herbicide out of the soil. Right. Yeah. You can decompose any pesticide, any toxic chemicals you want to talk about. And, you know, I don't care what they are or how recalcitrant, difficult to decompose, people might say they are. There are plenty of microorganisms on this planet that we can use to decompose them. 
all the work that Paul Stamets is doing right now is proving that over and over and over again. Oh, we can't ever decompose this. It's going to be here for the next 50 billion years. Absolutely not. You just have to get the right organisms. Maybe it's going to take us a little bit of time to find the right organisms. It's like with the, um, some of those herbicides that were synthetic. Synthetic herbicides. Why would you do that? You want that persistence to last forever? Well, guess what? There are microorganisms that even attack that stuff. So any carbon compound you want to talk about, there are microorganisms that will decompose it. Sometimes we have to search a little bit. Sometimes we've got to go find the inoculum and bring it to the place you've got that toxic chemical accumulated. Some, quite often, we have to put in additional foods. And one of those bacteria, their absolute favorite food is molasses, blackstrap non-sulfured molasses, because it's 150 different sugars, and they just chow it down, and oh yeah, along the way they get rid of the toxic chemical at the same time. Fungi, they just need fungal foods, you know, so chitin, cellulose, uh, you know, th a couple ha thousand, hundred billion things that fungi will eat. Grateful you joined us for that conversation and interview. If you haven't subscribed to Heart and Soil Magazine yet, head over to heartandsoilmagazine.com Click on that subscribe button and join us for just $39.99 a year. You make yourself an amazing day and I'm really grateful you're part of our community.